Hi guys. So today we're going to be reading, which is obviously why I have my glasses on, and I want to talk to you guys about this story that I came across. And this is exactly why I make some of the videos that I make. When I talk about putting your kids on social media and, you know, like Alicia Dougherty, giving her kids their own devices and just, you know, not really fully understanding what your kids might be doing, who they might be talking to. Some parents claim that they know and then stuff like this happens and it's like, oh, that was during a period of time when I wasn't doing my due diligence or whatever. These types of things can happen. And it's not that I'm, um, I know that it might come off like I'm lecturing or whatever. And if that's your perception, you're obviously allowed to have that. Um, but this is such an important conversation. These kids that are being put on social media or being given their own devices, whether they're public figures or not, the internet is just not a safe place for kids to exist. That is, if you want to boil it down to something very simple, the internet is not a safe place for kids to be existing and connecting with strangers that they don't know. And knowing that things like this happen, and then I see family vloggers putting their kids out on Front Street and telling everybody where they go to school and their birthday and their full name and the hospital they were born in, like... It's all far too much. It is wild to me. So this young girl, she was 15. She went missing out of Montgomery County, Maryland. It says a 15 year old girl who went missing from Montgomery County, Maryland was found in a Baltimore mall on Tuesday, six weeks after her disappearance, authorities said. The teen was recognized by a mall employee who contacted security early Tuesday afternoon. This is literally just a couple days ago. Mall security then contacted police and she was reunited with her family. The teen left her home in North Bethesda on July 11th. Her parents said that they feared she had been lured from home by someone she met on social media. We believe that she was kind of groomed and lured online by somebody. And we've got evidence of that from social media, her mother said. And that yes, she left may have been voluntarily, but now she's been abducted and she is somewhere that we don't believe she's in control of her situation. The teen kissed her mother goodnight and went to her room. When her mother went to check on her later, she was gone. She left her phone and makeup bag and didn't take any, uh, didn't take the money that was sitting on the counter. If she could be home, she would be, her mother said. If someone has taken her from us, I truly believe that she's been taken. Montgomery County Police searched the area near the teen's home and found surveillance images showing her near a Whole Foods store on Executive Boulevard at about 9 p.m. on July 11th. That was the last time that she was seen. Her parents asked anyone with information on her whereabouts, no matter how minor, to contact the police, the FBI, and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children help the county police in the investigation. So when I make videos and I mention apps like the Bark app, where you can really be zone into like what your kids are doing. Um, if you are going to give them a device, bare minimum, you know, maybe if her mother knew about this ahead of time, it could have been controlled immediately instead of it allowing, instead of it being allowed to evolve into a situation where this young girl left the safety of her home in the middle of the night to go meet somebody that she met on social media. I, I think that what kids are exposed to on social media is very, also very interesting. Speaking of the Doherty Dozen, I saw that she did a TikTok where she asked all of her kids, of course, still doing roll calls in front of their private residence. Everyone knows where they live now. But she did a roll call and asked the kids who their favorite YouTuber was. And the kinship girl said, Ryan with the sauce. And I didn't know who Ryan was, so I went and looked on his YouTube channel out of curiosity. And this is not content that a teenage girl should be watching, my opinion. You know, 
sexualizing people based off their physical appearance and making that type of content for me is not something that I would want this girl exposed to, especially because there have been some other things that have happened while she was in the care of the Doherty's that are very scary and alarming. And to hear that that's the YouTube channel that she's watching, I just... I don't like it and maybe I'm just a stick in the mud and no fun and I'm okay with that because when it comes to these kids being online it is just not safe. I also came across a TikTok that I will include where this girl used to work in, uh, she either used to or still does, her job was essentially dealing with a lot of underage content where you know, these kids were not being used in a good way at all online. And she made a couple of videos and raised some really, really valid issues and concerns. I work for the government investigating child online sex crimes. And here are some things that you should know. A majority of photos uploaded of children to the dark web are taken from normal people's Facebook and Instagram pages. If you see a suggested person on your Facebook page that you have no mutual friends with, it means that they search your profile at least three times. 80% of children who experience assault and exploitation are under the age of 12. The dark web is not some mysterious and exclusive place. All you have to do is download a browser. Child exploitation is a billion dollar industry and there are thousands of websites being created every single day to share photos and videos. My advice to parents would be to really limit your child on social media because Photos and videos can be warped and placed in the dark web extremely easily. The majority of abuse takes place in the home, but is also very common in schools, churches, and other extracurricular activities for children. Let me know if you have any questions. I can easily make a part two. I have so many facts that I know about this. More information on why you should not post pictures of your children coming from somebody who worked in child exploitation. A lot of photos of children that are put on the dark web are not explicit. In my experience, I saw a lot of children who did activities such as gymnastics and dance, and there were a lot of photos being posted of them in their leotards and outfits. These parents often had no idea that their child was on the dark web. Additionally, just normal photos of children can be warped into images that are explicit, even though there was never an explicit photo being taken. Lastly, and probably most disturbingly, there will be children who go viral on the dark web, and there's no reason for this, it just happens, and there will be pages and websites and forums dedicated to just sending pictures of this child this is going to sound kind of blunt but influencers that constantly post pictures of their children often in compromising situations or positions know that their children have the potential to be exploited and they don't care you cannot tell me that parents who post pictures of their children eating a hot dog think that it's just completely innocent and nobody is going to take that in a different way my heart absolutely breaks for those children who have such a following on social media because of their parents because those children are going to grow up one day and have the potential to find out that they were put on the dark web and if you take 30 seconds to look at some of the comments on those posts you'll see that people are already sexualizing those children when i hear people like her talk that's the content that i hope some of these parents come across because maybe me as a YouTuber sitting in my car just talking about this stuff or sitting at home, maybe that doesn't resonate with certain people, which is fine. But maybe if they hear it from somebody who has actually been like in the trenches dealing with this kind of stuff and seeing the awful things that some of these people do with the images and videos of your kids that you're putting out there, um, maybe they'll listen if there's a different perspective. So of course I will include that as well. But it's just really scary. I'm glad that this girl was reunited, but it doesn't mean that the next one, you know, will be. The next one could be a really awful case where the girl never finds her way home, and that would be absolutely awful. And the best, um, you know, in my opinion, I think the best approach is to make sure that you know every single thing that your kid is doing on their phone, and maybe things like this can be caught early enough where it doesn't end in a middle of the night meetup where this girl is missing for weeks literally i know this was a short little video but i had those thoughts and i wanted to share them with you guys so yeah that's it for now if you like the video please leave a like in the comments and if you'd like to see more from me in the future please subscribe
I'll see you guys soon. Bye.